So this is an educational video for doctors on how to use fillers to rejuvenate the forehead. So let's first look at why do we actually do forehead fillers. Now forehead fillers is done to either do one of two things, either to treat wrinkles on the forehead uh, that we don't want to over treat with botulinum toxin. And the reason for that would be because botulinum toxin relaxes the frontalis muscle and often with aging what happens is the upper eyelid become loose or the brow starts sagging downwards and excessive use of botulinum toxin can lead to a drop of the brow. So we use fillers then to give an alternative for patients with forehead wrinkles other than botulinum toxin or maybe then requiring less botulinum toxin. The other reason for forehead fillers is to actually help to improve the curvature of the forehead. And what we see is with, especially with female patients, we get a lot of volume loss in the middle part of the forehead. And this often leads to a shadow formation and an indentation. And it doesn't look very aesthetically attractive for those patients. So then we use forehead fillers to actually smooth out the forehead. Now it's very important to do it correctly because with forehead fillers, it's very highly risk area because of the vascularity of the forehead. So when we look at the vascularity of the forehead, the supraorbital and supratrochlear artery starts very deep, and then as it passes the supraciliary arch, it actually becomes very superficial because it supplies the frontalis muscle. So when we do forehead fillers, it's very important that we are underneath the frontalis muscle, which is the safer plane to be with fillers. And this is also the plane where we're far away from the vessels and we at all times going to use a cannula to reduce the risk of any vascular accident. So let's look at how do we actually do the procedure. We start with a 22 gauge 50 millimeter cannula, starting from the temporal crest about half, one and a half to two centimeters above the bra. Then we take the cannula and we insert it underneath the frontalis muscle and working on the supraperiosteal, so on the bone. Very slow steps moving towards the midline and it's quite important that you don't push the cannula all the way to the midline and then do retro retrograde tracing because then you'll end up with some spaghetti strings. So what I'm rather demonstrating is that we do almost like, I often call it like small little boluses or a risotto instead of a spaghetti. So we go towards the midline, small little micro boluses, and then to the next vector. The majority of the product has to be in the middle part of the forehead because that's where we lose the most volume. And if there's wrinkles at the top, we also do a little bit of top wrinkles. And then while the cannula is in, you ask the patient to lift the brow and you see which area still needs treatment. And it's quite remarkable to see the result halfway when doing the one side compared to the other side very important that we use a low viscosity HA filler and at all times be very cautious for any vascular accident check the capillary refill look for bl blanching look for any signs of sudden pain any sudden sensations of the patients even on the often they would just feel a tingling from the nerves that you may be touched but any other pain um, or marble effect or blanching effect be very cautious for those so I hope with this short video, this will help you to try this procedure for those patients with either forehead wrinkles or then the indentation. But at all times, be very careful. Make sure that you're on the bone with a 22 gauge cannula, slow movements, not vigorous movements that you can hurt any of the vascular structures and do small little micro boluses and do a very good massage at the end. And this will give you a very good outcome for your patients. And remember low viscosity HA filler and at all times look for any signs of vascular compromise. Thank you.